on this episode. Have you heard from our Lord and Savior? Let us talk about the magnetic force. Let us put our hands together in prayer. Bing, 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 bing. And let us receive the blessings. Uh, it absolutely doesn't work. Mm, hi everybody, this is Christian from Laziness Academy. Hello, well, well, welcome to Advanced Schmap Tutorial. This is the episode 87. And we are working on the pickups. So last time around we added basic pickups. You can see them uh, coming out of enemies when I sh really shoot them down. It is good, it is good. We cannot pick them up currently, so they're not doing their, their job. And there's a bunch of things that I want to be, uh, be adding. So I'm going to add those things. So for example, when we're spawning pickups, I want to be able to um, eject pickups. I want them to go be going out with a force. Uh, and during playtesting, I noticed that this is a crucial step. It's actually quite important that the pickups don't just like limply fall out of the explosion, but just being shot out of the explosion. And that adds a lot of this, that kinetic energy that's, I think, very important. Um, I also want to have the star pickups because we have the cows, but we don't have the star pickups, so we want to be able to spawn different types of pickups. And then finally, I want to be able to spawn multiple pickups. There might be situations where we're spawning a whole bunch of pickups, and I want to be able to do that. So that's something that our spawn function, we're going to rewrite the spawn function to be able to do that. Now when we're updating pickups, um, something that I want to do is I want to have, uh, I want to be able to pick up the pickups. Uh, I want to be also delete all pickups, because right now they just exist infinitely. And so when they drop uh, off the screen, I want to be able to delete them. And I want to be able to, please chat. I want you to remain civil for this one, okay? Okay? There's sometimes kids watching, alright? I want to be able to suck in the pickups, like slurp them in. That's not getting any better. Anyway, uh, I want to be able to magnetically attract the pickups. Let's, let's call it like this. So I want to have like a magnetic force to be acting on the pickups to be able to grab them from afar. Now draw pickups, not much changes, but I still I want to draw the stars. And the stars are not supposed to be in bubbles, so that's something that we need to keep in, in mind. And um, with a magnetic force, I want to add speed lines. And we're gonna see how that looks. It's, it's part of a magnetic force kind of thing. Uh, I want to add, add a speed line. Uh, yeah, so that's the on our, our plate today. Uh, let us start. What are we going to start out with? Let us start with something very simple. I want to be able to pick up the pickups. All right, so this is going to be happening here. And what I'm thinking is, uh, after we move the pickups, we do something like this. P dot D S dist equals dist. We're going to calculate. Is it dist? We do have dist, right? There we go. That's the function. That function calculates the distance between two points. I want to do that. I want to calculate the, uh, the distance here. After removing, I want to be able to calculate the distance between the pickup and the player. Uh, and I'm saving this into a property of the pickup, and I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm just going to do this, and if we don't need this, we can remove this later. Why am I doing this? Well, because the way we're going to check the collision detection is we're just going to check the distance between the player and the pickup. So if p.dist, if that's smaller, then what did I did last time around? What did I figure out was good? Was it like 35? 32. Yeah, 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 yeah. 32. Then. And in this case, I want to do the, 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 the pickup. First of all, I'm just going to delete the pickup. Like this. Uh, I'm saving this in a property. I'm not, not sure if I need this. I'm saving this mainly because I want to maybe later use this distance for something else. But the real reason, the real th uh, mystery that I want to be talking about is why am I not just using the collision detection functions that we already have? We have a collision, we have a perfectly fine collision detection function um, that has a width and height. We have a collision box, right? So we could have put a collision box around the 
uh, pick up and it's got would be fine right we could do that i did that uh, as a test uh, there's two things that i don't like about it first um um the box is always going to be square and the pickups are like here we're talking about you know not really like colliding with the pickup but just being in in, in the vicinity of the pickup and that will favor you know approaching the pickups um uh, diagonally so when the pickups are diagonally they will pop it will be get captured earlier than if you approach them aligned with them, right? And that looks a bit odd sometimes. Like I, I, it looks like the, you pick up the pick up with air because the of how the sprite is designed. You know, on the diagonals there's nothing, right? So I kind of like I, 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 I it just looks a little bit better when when you have like the distance measurement, especially when the distance is so large, when the collision box is so large. But there's a more important reason, and that says is a game design reason, and that is I can tweak this number very easily. I can just type in 48, and then the range in which we are able to pick up the pickups is going to be that wasn't 48. It doesn't matter. The range is going to be higher, and it's just like a number that I change, right? If I do a collision box, then I have to tweak the collision box. I have to go exit out, go to another program, tweak the collision box, go back into the couch map, play that. I guess it's this whole sequence, right? It's difficult to tweak that number. And later on, we might actually do some other uh, stuff with the collision detection stuff. For example, in certain games, it's like you don't pick up the pickup when you're close to it, but it gets magnetically attracted to you. It triggers kind of like the suck-in function, right? So... Yeah, because of that, I, I think it it's makes sense to do the distance collision detection for the pickups. It's Again, it's not totally efficient. It would be nice to reuse uh, already existing systems. But to heck with it. We, we're just going to do that. We're gonna just going to do the pickup. Let's see if, that, if this even works. Oh yeah, we have to get the pickup. Uh, it absolutely doesn't work. Oh, yeah, because I have to do a comma here. Yep, those pickups getting picked up, but they just disappear. And you, you know my rules. You know my rules. Whenever something leaves the stage or enters the stage, you want to have some kind of effect to communicate that. And that's something that we're going to do today as well. So I want to, do, uh, for for now, I want to play a sound effect. And I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to bore you with me uh, creating the sound effects right now. I'm just going to copy the sound effects from a project because that was a pretty sick sound effect. I'm going to go here and here. I copied it already. And I'm gonna paste it in in the last spot. Boom. A little bit bloop bloop. You know, it it feels a little bit like popping maybe a popping a a, a balloon, right? Like a bubble. And that sounds good to me. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that feels good, but it doesn't look good. Right? We're popping a bubble and we don't really see that bubble being popped. Luckily for us, we do have uh, particles animations and we're going to add a particle. We're going to add a wave. Now there's a lot of things that need to be defined here. That's a little bit token heavy, but uh, that's, that's the problem. We're not really, like it doesn't feel like we're saving that much tokens by reusing the system over and over again because the system is so heavy on the data that need to supply to it that uh, just like something like this is just like hardcore. But yeah, we're gonna create a shwave and then we're gonna put it at the position where the pickup was. We're gonna give it a color seven. I don't know sure if this is necessary, but we're gonna try. The radius is gonna be six. I have the numbers written down here. And then we're gonna have a radius speed. So it's gonna get bigger by 2.5 and a max age is going to be six so at uh, after six frame it disappears just a little boop. <coughs> oh shave it's a shave baby yes you see big little big 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 wave indicating that we popped that bubble very clear that we picked it up and I you know I tweaked this these values I was as I was prototyping uh, tweak the distance when the distance is very far away you need more clearer communication that pick, picked it up 
when the distance is smaller, then there is a lot of overlap between the sprite of the pickup and the sprite of the ship. So there's less need to indicate. It's very clear that you like it, it disappeared into the ship. Uh, but yeah, if something just disappears kind of like a couple of pixels away, you need to have some kind of effect. Um, and also, this value is highly, highly uh, gameplay relevant, right? Like if the value is higher, then it's so much easier to pick up the pickups, which is feels good because you just hover up all the pickups, but also it makes it so that there's less of a skill test to picking up the pickups. It's like, oh, you just like... Just move around a little bit and you got them all right. And if the value is smaller, then you really have to be precise how you pick up the pickups. Same thing, by the way, same thing, by the way, by this. This is like the base speed at which the pickup's moving downwards. If we make this higher, or if we meddle around with the way the pickup is moving, then some pickups might be diff more difficult to pick up. So let's put it to two, right? You see, now it's twice as... Now the pickups are really fast, so it's really hard to... to to pick them up right so sometimes you just might not be able to hit them right so yeah these are like things that you have to tweak around and, and meddle around with right so uh this part now where we picking up the pickup is good let us delete all the pickups in order to do that i want to actually see i want to actually see how many picks we have so let's go hashtag picks so you see now we have zero picks now we have three, and we picked up one up, but now two are still existing. They're still moving around somewhere in ether, and that's not good. So we're gonna do a simple system for that. Uh, we're gonna do something like uh, we're gonna do something like if x if y is great. Oh no, if p dot y is greater than 135 or something like it's not just at the at the edge of the screen. We're just gonna wait a little bit. Uh, delete. Pick up unceremoniously, ceremoniously. We're just going to delete it, and then everything else that happens happens in the else statement, right? That's that's a collision. If the pickup is too far away, no need to do anything else. We're just going to delete it. Okay, let's try this. Pickups are not disappearing again. Again, the treacherous, the treacherous dot, the treacherous point, period. Ah, yeah, there we go. Yes, it's working. Oh, why? I can't leave the screen. That's, I, I can leave, I mean, I can leave the screen. Let's put that on the list. Screen lock. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're deleting the old pickups. That's already pretty good. Now, okay, let us move on. The magnetic force I want to deal with later. For now, I want to be tweak the spawning function to be a little bit more flexible so we can do more with our pickups. So, for example, let us do the star pickup. So, something like here, right? Do picks, nope, not do picks, spawn picks, px, py. Uh, then this is going to be a star, true or false, right? So, uh, p star. And then the last one is going to be num. Well, let's go go num and then the p star. p num p star. So um, for now, something I want to do is I'm, I will do this really stupid. I'm just going to have a star ability. And then I'm going to drop the p star into it. p, p star. Like this. It's, it's easy. And then the animation lib is going to be P star and uh, oh yeah, like no, it's like this. Any ellipse um, P star and seventeen or sixteen, like this, right? And then let's see if if yeah, that should be almost it. Let's go to the update function when we're spawning the pickups. I want to just see stars. I want to see the stars. Here, uh, I want to spawn one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see the star. True. And there we go. That's the star. And you see the problem. The stars have bubbles, so we don't want the, the stars to have bubbles. But that's something that's very easy to achieve. So if exclamation point p star, 
So if it's not a star, then we draw the oval. Like also, oops. Let's go not P star like this. Right, so now the stars are moving the same, but I think it's okay. I think the, the bubble motion feels good for the stars. Uh, in some of my prototypes, I had the stars move faster and it was bad. People were upset about that because it was difficult to pick them up and people didn't like that. So let us, let us just keep them around like this, it's fine. Right, so we can do star pickups and we can draw star pickups. Um, magnetic force and speed lines is something, let's, let's put this into its own category now. This is kind of like the, the magnetic force section. I want to eject this pickups and I want to have multiple pickups happening. First of all, let me show you what, what I mean with eject pickups. Right now, uh, the pickups going downwards at the speed of one. If I go make it go upwards with a speed of five, you will see what we'll have a very different visual, right? You see how they're popping out? That's cool. Huh? That's cool. It looks a lot more like, like they're popping out of the explosion, right? And this obviously also works with, um, with a cow. Yeah, see? It looks a lot cooler. But that's obviously a very simple way of doing this. I want to um, tweak this a little bit, this, this animation. There's two things I want to tweak, and that has to do with the fact that we can also want to eject multiple pickups that makes things a little bit more complicated, right? If this was just always one pickup pop pop popping up, it would be fine to leave it as it is. But sometimes it's multiple pickups being spawned out of one explosion. And if you have multiple pickups and they're all moving uh, around, along the same trajectory, they will be all stuck on the same space. And I don't like that. So what I want to do is I want to fan them out a little bit, right? Uh, depending on how many pickups there are, I want to be create like a little fan. And while we are here, while we're already creating the fan, something I also like to do maybe to make the game a little bit more exciting is to make the um, pickups not just like pop up upwards, but just like um, always away from the ship, right? So when you're shooting something, like when you, for example, when there's an explosion and your ship ex um, blows everything up, I want the pop-ups to be, uh, the pickups to be popping out uh, away from the ship so as to be blown away by the explosion. Uh, when you're shooting everything downwards, it will look the same. But if you're using some kind of ability to shoot from the side, the pickups will be flying away from the player. So they will be more um, difficult to pick up. There's going to be more of a challenge picking them up, but it's also controllable, right? You can predict how they behave. Uh, and that's something that I want to maybe add. This will make our pickup function a little bit complicated. I'm not going to lie. This will make it a little bit complicated, but we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to make it, we're going to make it work. Right. For now, let us like slowly derive what we're what we're looking for. So we want to do something like for i equals one to p num, right? We want to add multiple pickups. We want to add multiple pickups. That's that's the, the core. That's the core. Let us first maybe do something like um, so when we're spawning the pickups we're gonna do local ang uh, equals um, and now we're gonna do like a calculation between where uh, where the pickup is being spawned and when the player is gonna be so that's gonna be um, we already did that a ten I already thought about maybe putting this into like a function the problem is like this is already a function it's it's not gonna be saving a lot of tokens because this is already a pretty short function so it's like uh, I need to write this on PSPR dot y so first y minus uh, P Y uh, P S P R dot uh, X minus P X right. So this ang is the angle between the uh, the pickup and the player, and we're gonna drop these things in here. So we're gonna do like a sine ang, and remember we, it needs to be minus because we want to fly away from the player. So minus cosine ang right. So this will eject the pickup away from the player. Uh, the only problem is like it won't be as strong as it was before 
because now it's like we're not multiplying with anything else so it will be just at the speed of one so it's going to be look a little bit limp but let, let, let's look at how this looks you see it's 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 flying away but it's just like very slow so um, i want to multiply this with some kind of number and i derived the following number so it's times four on the x and then here i want to always going be on, going a little bit up right so it's up like this i think this is the numbers i had so um in the y direction we always no matter where the player is i want to go very far up okay this is the wrong direction uh needs to be minus four there we go and so now we have the pickups going up a little bit now if the pickups uh, the enemies are very very um, high on the screen, you won't see them, they kind of fly off the screen, but that's not too bad, I think. I think it's more important that the, you, you see them uh, when they're on the screen, so that's good. See how they're flying up. And it's very important to note that they fly up and they settle into the bubble motion, and that is because the, we did this. That was maybe a bit complicated last time around. That was a bit confusing why I did that. But now this, this pays dividends, right? Because here's where we calculate bubble motion. And here is what we take whatever this speed the pickup was moving at, and we make it animate into the bubble motion. So if it was flying very fast, it will slow down and settle into a bubble motion. And that is exactly what we're doing. We can make this go uh, faster into bubble motion or slow into bubble motion by tweaking these values. But 10 was pretty good to me. Okay, this is good. We can probably calculate this this here outside um, because this angle, this is something that is the same for every pickup. The angle between the player and where the pickup is is the same for every pickup, but that's something that will change now a little bit. All right, so now I want the pickups to be spread uh, like fan out a little bit and there's different ways of doing this. I think an easy way to do easiest way to do this is just to make sure that there is an angle between the, the different um, the different pickups and just like just like define an angle and if there's more they're gonna be spreading out more right like it's, we're not gonna always have the sa same uh, range of, of spread it's just gonna be always a bit of a separation between the pickups right and that separation I think is 0 0.1 something that, that work well so something I want to calculate is the entirety of the spread uh, we're gonna call it full ang uh, we're gonna take the separation and we're gonna multiply it by the number of pickups we're gonna go minus one though on the, on the number of pickups uh, the reason is that the spread is gonna be zero when there's just one pickup, right? <laughs> I just want to make sure that the spread is zero and it's just one pickup and it's two pickups, then uh, the spread is 0 0.1 and so forth. So it's always one less than you think it is, right? It's one of those one-off issues in programming. And in fact, this calculation here is now something, now I want to be like, I don't want to calculate the angle of where the player is, I want to calculate where we start doing the spread because the spread is going to go, you know, it will fan out. We'll start at some point and then we'll, we're going to add a spacing to the spread, right? Ping, 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 ping. And it will be centered along the line to the player. Um, so I want to now calculate the beginning of our spread, right? So that's going to be the line of the player minus full ang, the, the, the entirety of the spread divided by two. So now ang is where we begin where we begin doing the spread. So now here we're gonna do local, inside the loop we're gonna go ang2 equals, I'm gonna start at the ang plus i minus one multiplied by uh, 0.1. Uh, we could maybe save some tokens. Let's, can we save some tokens? Four, five, six, one. If we start by zero and go to pi p num minus one, then we can just do it by i. We saved the token! Sorry, that was my Dropbox. I need to maybe close my Dropbox here. All right, so now here we need to now put the ang2 in here. Right, so now we're no longer using this source angle, this uh, origin angle, but now we're using the angle that we calculate on every, every frame. Uh, and that is gonna be it honestly we could get the full ang because we're actually using the full ang only once so we could get the full ang in here 
Yeah, sure. Why not? And that, that doesn't. That means we we can save the following. It's a little bit complicated now, but it's okay. Let's see if first if this works. It does not work. Let us undo then. Let us undo the the full ink and let us let us see what happens. So what happens when we? Because it's easier to debug this. All right. It's not num. It's pnum. My bad. Let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that's good. So, okay, but you know, this is nothing special. We're just spawning a single enemy. Let's spawn three enemies and see how that works. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that feels very satisfying. Yeah, you can see they're they're all fanning out a little bit, and they're all fanning out to the side. If I'm to the side of them, they're going to the side. Let me kill this enemy off to the side. You see, they were going away from me a little bit, so it's it's a little bit f more challenging to pick them up. I think it's worth it to do that. Uh, let's let's see how this works with two, because that's you know two three is the kind of numbers that we're gonna work with the most. We're not gonna have five pickups. But I'm gonna try how five looks. Okay, let's let's see. Five. It's gonna be a big spread, huh? Yes. And it looks good. It looks good. They're all like spread out. I mean, they're fanning out more now because there's more, but there's just like more of them here, so it would it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Okay, so this solved uh, the eject pickups and the multi pickups. That is done. Let us talk about the magnetic force. All right, so this is actually something I had from the very beginning, and this was basically the way I would pick up, because the thing is like, okay, I, let me show you. Uh, this is now the range of the pickup is 32. Let's set it to 64, right? Let's set, set it to Nintendo 64. You see how they just like disappear? It doesn't really feel like as if I'm picking them up, right? If I want to have very generous picking up. It just doesn't do that. It, it's it doesn't feel great. It, it's it's not. It doesn't feel like picking up anymore because I don't see why they suddenly pop. So at some point when you want to pick up the range, the pickups at a certain range, you want them to actually fly towards you to, to fly towards the player and then get picked up and not just like immediately pop. So this distance calculation, that only works to a certain extent. Um, something I want to do for now is something like if, um, if this is the case, then this. I'd just like to, to exemplify the, 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 how, how I would use it maybe in a different game. I'm not going to use it for this game, but I'd just like to, to show you what I would do. Then else if else p dist is smaller than 64, right? If it's smaller than 64, I'm gonna set P, let's call it magnet. <laughs> We're gonna set it to true, okay? So now the magnet force for this uh, pickup has been activated uh, because it's smaller than 64. And then this calculation for magnetic pickups, this calculation will work differently. So we're gonna do something like if P dot magnet then else like so so what will the magnet do well we're going to use the same thing that we did here where we calculate an angle between the pickup and the player uh, that's something i want to do here i want to calculate that but we can uh, remove the full angle at the end there okay so this gives us the angle between the magnet and the player and now what i want to do is i want to slowly morph whatever speed the pickup already had, I want to slowly morph that to that angle. So that's actually pretty simple. So it's like p dot, p dot sx plus equal uh, sine ang and then some kind of multiplier, let's go 0 0.3, right? And then the same thing with, with y. Like that, let's try that. Oh, there is a problem. Ah, else if, I think. Okay. So let's pick it, them up. <laughs> nope! <laughs> They're flying away. Oh, right, because we have some py here. We should go p.y in here. p 
Speed.x hier. See, now they're, they're flying towards me. And it's subtle. It's subtle. I'm going to make it even clearer by making it 128. So it's like the entire screen. All of the pickups on the entire screen fly towards the player. And that's actually a very useful thing to do. So you see they're flying in a little bit fast. We can we can maybe limit their speed. But otherwise, that's that's cool. So limiting the speed is sadly a little bit... A little bit like, uh, so that's 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 a little bit hurtful, but let's let's do this. So local SPD equals um, we calculated the dist uh, zero zero p dot sx p dot sy. So basically, we're checking how fast the uh, the the pickups flying, and then we're gonna go if SPD is greater than four, then so if we are speeding with a particle speeding, and then we're gonna shrink down the speed a little bit. So we're gonna go p dot sx equals uh, multiply equals SPD um, divided by four. Is it, um, wait a minute, that's, uh, no, it, we have to divide by. So we divide it, if it's high, yeah, we divide it by some kind of value, yeah, yeah. And then the same thing with Y. Like this, so it kind of like, if it's higher than four, we're gonna cap it at four, basically. The entire speed of the particle. I think that will work, let's see. Let's make it really slow, so it's really clear that it works. Yeah, you see they're flying towards me, but they're flying very slowly now, right? And you see that they're no longer have like the this. So let's cap it, uh, let's make the cap three. So yeah, they're, now they're being attracted, but um, they're slowly flying in. Let's make it four, actually. I think four was a good value that I had before. It was a little bit fast at one point, but otherwise, we thought it was this fast. Yeah. There's one thing that helps with fast movement, and that is the last thing that we have on our list. So we have the magnetic force now, but I want to add speed lines. This is something that I think really helps. So we're gonna go if p dot magnetic. Okay. So we're gonna draw a line. If the uh, pickup is being attracted by a magnetic force, I wanna draw a line from where the, where the particle is to where the particle was last time around. Was it last time around? What did I have? Oh, actually, last time around, divided by five. So, um, dot p dot uh, minus, p dot sx minus five. So there's gonna be a line that the particle leaves behind. Uh, not the particle, I always say particle. Uh, let, let me clarify, whenever I say particle in these last two videos, I meant the pickup and the color is gonna be seven, right? Uh, no, not minus, multiply, please. Multiply, it's gonna be multiply. Let's try that. It absolutely did not, was it was magnet? Did I just said magnet? Okay, there's the line, it doesn't work quite correctly because we are drawing it to a px, px. It should be py. There we go. You see, there's a line they're leaving behind, right? And that makes it a little bit clearer that they're being, being that they're flying fast. It's kind of like a speed line or line, and that makes it kind of like easier to follow their movement as well. Now, most of the time, oh, whoa, what is this? Is this frame rate? Oh, I think it's just because I'm recording the screen. Okay. Um, it's it's not going to use it constantly. It's just like a tool that I had in my toolbox while I was prototyping, whenever I wanted to have the pickup range be really large, I had like this ability to set the magnetic force to something. Um, uh, I'm not going to use it in my actual game because I realized that I actually want the skill to actually, you know, fly towards the, par um, the pickups and actually pick them up uh, manually. Um, but I'm just going to leave it for now a little bit because I think it looks very satisfying when they Get attracted to you. I think this is this looks very, very juicy and nice. 
yeah, that is it. That uh, wraps up the pickups. Uh, let's leave, let me clarify. Lock player to the screen. That's something I think we need to do next. And then we have to do next, we have to do the bims. The bims, the bombs. But that's something that comes up in the next episode. For now, I want to say a big thank you and huge shout out to all of the beautiful people, who, all of the fantastic people who are doing their part and supporting this show on Coffee. The address is, if you want to join those people, is coffee.com slash lazydevs. And today I want to read out one of those a little bit of late comments. This is from DJ Russian 4 ic Ruslan for IC. Uh, they ask on. Um, I have made a video about game genres that you should maybe start out with when you are doing your first game ever. That are good ideas to start out with. You don't have to, but I, it's just a recommendation, right? I call it like the game dev scrambled eggs video. Um, the question is a quick question: Do load runners count as labyrinth puzzles? Anyway, it's quite helpful, guy. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I would probably put them in uh, jump and runs, although they, it's true that load run, the original load runner, isn't really a jump and run. The way you jump in this game is very like grid based, and that makes it a lot easier to pull off than a regular jump and run. So if you just want to do like a road run, uh, load runner. Uh, uh, spin-off that's actually probably a good choice there's one thing that bothers me about load runner and that is the fact that it, it, it is a little bit of a pac-man situation where you are being followed by enemies and it's uh, the game is quite about avoiding enemies who are kind of like find their way through the labyrinth of the of different platforms and uh, making the enemies move through whatever level you design is is tough is tricky it's not impossible it's doable absolutely doable it's just like a tall order i think for a for a new game dev so that's something i would watch out for uh, if you're eager to get into uh pathfinding then maybe you that would be good but maybe also um maybe you can make a load runner that works without enemies that would be also a good choice all right so that's pickups done we have juicy pickups there's one big portion of juice coming up and that is going to be the explosion that's something i work a lot on the prototype so i'm eager to jump in and show you my findings see you on next episode bye bye